Uh, lovely to welcome folks um, this morning and uh, in case you don't know me, my name is Ben, I'm the vicar at St Saviour's. Uh, welcome if you're joining on uh, YouTube later as well with the recording, it's great to have you with us this morning. Uh, a few things coming up in coming weeks as um, Lent uh, starts this coming Wednesday with Ash Wednesday. We've got two services happening, one at 10.30 which is a phone only um, service perhaps for folks that haven't tried Zoom before or don't have an internet connection but would like to have a go at a phone only uh, service and then later at 7.30 we'll have a kind of more normal as I say um, inverted commas I guess uh, Zoom service at 7.30 so that's Ash Wednesday there'll be two services one that's phone only at 10.30 and then one later at 7.30 uh, in the evening. Also as we come into Lent we're are looking to make the most of the opportunity it can provide us to grow closer to God and to grow closer to each other. So we've got a whole range of different midweek things um, happening at St Saviour's. Uh, we'd really love it if you would uh, want to get involved with perhaps just uh, one of those things. We're not expecting everybody to do um, everything. But of course, if you want to do more than one, then you're very welcome to do that. Let me just highlight um, just one or two of them. One that's starting this coming Thursday is the craft and conversation that's at 10 30 a.m uh, this coming thursday it's an opportunity for folks who are crafty to get together via zoom and uh, do some craft and share some tips together and um, there'll be an opportunity to pray at the end of that uh, if folk would like to um, as well and if you're not crafty but you just feel like having a, a cup of tea with some other people then do feel free to um, join that as well uh, judith dawson is one of the folks that's sort of masterminding that so do speak to her if you want some more uh, info on it and then the um, following Monday which will be Monday the 22nd uh, we'll be having the first of our weekly uh, Lenten morning prayer um, sessions that's uh, going to be on Zoom as well it'll be a kind of quiet reflective um, opportunity to spend some time in prayer there'll be some Bible readings some liturgy that we can join in with it's a great way if you've not been to a prayer meeting before uh, it'd be a great introduction to that or if you just want some quiet and some opportunity to reflect and be still at the start of the week and focus on God, another great thing uh, to be involved with. So that's morning prayer 9am starting Monday the 22nd and that'll continue every Monday during Lent. So I think that's more than enough um, waffle about what's going on in the future. Why don't we just pause for a moment just to collect our thoughts, to recognise God's presence here with us as we come to worship him this morning. So Paul writes in Romans chapter 5, God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Well, in case you've forgotten, it is Valentine's Day. Um, so if you have forgotten, there's probably still time this afternoon to nip down to the petrol station and get some flowers if you need to do that. Um, but obviously Valentine's Day, I guess we can approach it with with two different sort of mindsets, really. We can feel positive at the opportunity to um, remind ourselves of those that we love uh, in our life but we can also approach it with a sense of longing as perhaps we we don't have the relationship that we really long for or perhaps we've lost someone that we really love um, recently but whether we love valentine's day or whether we're approaching it with a sense of longing it can point us to the love that god has for us and the longing that god has for us it can remind us of the depth of his love that he has shown us as he's poured his spirit into the hearts of those that trust and follow him. And it can remind us of the longing that God has for us, that he longs to know each one of us more deeply, to surround and support and encourage us with who he is, with his kindness, his peace and his love. And so as we are reminded of God's great love and longing for us, why don't we say a prayer? Loving, generous and kind God, as we come before you now, we ask that you would fill us once again with your Holy Spirit. Pour into our hearts your love. Help us to know you close with us, though we might be distanced across the area. Help us to worship you 
Help us to show our love for you in this time that we have together. We ask that you would show us more of yourself and help us to love you in return. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. So we're going to join in our first song, Lord for the Years. Let's sing this together. You'll be muted so you can belt it out. As we sing of all that God has done for us, his great love for us, the truth of who he is, we recognise that we don't always match up to his standards. We don't always love ourselves, others and him as we should. And so we have an opportunity now to seek his forgiveness in our prayer of confession but let's just take a moment. Perhaps there's something in particular this morning that we want to say sorry to God for. Paul again writes, God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So let us then show our love for him by confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Do join in with the responses in yellow if you'd like to. We are often slow to follow the example of Christ. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. 
we often fail to be known as Christ's disciples. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We often fail to walk the way of the cross. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. So knowing that Christ died for us when we were still sinners, with confidence we ask that the God of love would bring us back to himself, forgive us our sins and assure us of his eternal love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We're going to continue now though with our Bible reading which Rosie is going to bring to us. Good morning everyone. The reading this morning is taken from the Good News Bible pages 152 to 153, Acts 2, 42 to 47. They spent their time in learning from the apostles, taking part in the fellowship and sharing in the fellowship meals and the prayers. Many miracles and wonders were being done through the apostles and everyone was filled with awe. All the believers continued together in close fellowship and shared their belongings with one another. They would sell their property and possessions and distribute the money among all, according to which other, what each one needed. Day after day, they met as a temple, as a group in the temple, and they had their meals together in their homes, eating with glad and humble hearts, praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And every day the Lord added to their group those who were being served. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks so much, uh, Rosie, for that reading. We're going now to affirm our faith, to remind ourselves of the truth of the God that we believe in, the God who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So do join in with the words as they appear on the screen. We say together, we believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm going to hand over now to Ben or Kirit, who's going to share a bit more from that reading. Well, uh, good morning, everyone. It's uh, lovely to see you. It's great to be together this morning as we worship God. Um, let's just um, let's just pray as we begin, shall we? Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your goodness to us. We thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross and to rise again. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you that you fill our hearts with your spirit. And we pray now that as we study your word together, you would speak to us, that your spirit would guide us and that you would form us into the people that you want us to be. For Jesus' sake and for his glory, we pray. Amen. Amen. Before being your curate, I used to find myself travelling in and out of Birmingham New Street Station, rail, railway station, quite regularly for work. Now, New Street used to be a horrible concrete bunker, but a few years ago, a lot of money was spent on it and it is now a, not, a much nicer station. The place was always busy and I enjoyed watching what other people were doing as they waited if I wasn't in a rush. 
Um, some would be rushing to catch a train, others grabbing a quick coffee or a sandwich. Others would be looking up at the boards, confused, trying to figure out where they needed to be. While others would be chatting, scrolling on their phones or complaining loudly into their mobile phones about Trevor from sales. Over the past few weeks, we've been tracing the big story of the Bible. And we've seen how God has promised the world we all want. But people are unable to build that world. And instead, God brought that world into being through the death and resurrection of Jesus. And we come this week to look at the church. What is the point of the church? What is the church supposed to be like as we wait for Jesus? And I want us to notice three things this morning. And happily, they all begin with the letter F. The church is founded by Jesus, formed by Jesus and finished by Jesus. So firstly, the church is founded by Jesus. Now, our passage this morning, this morning read by Rosie and follows the account of the day of Pentecost. God sent his spirit on the disciples and they began to speak boldly about Jesus in different languages. And people were pretty surprised by this and they wanted to know what the heck was going on. So Peter explains, telling the crowd what we heard last week from James, that Jesus really was dead, but now he really is alive. We read that in chapter two, verses 23 and 24. Now, in response to this, the crowd asked, what should we do? How should we respond to what you're telling us? And Peter says, turn away from your sins and be baptized, verse 38. And a couple of verses later, we read that this is exactly what happened. Many of them believed his message and were baptized, verse 41. Belief and baptism are the gateway into the church. They're the gate into the church. The church exists because Jesus has done something amazing. The church is a community of people who have heard about this. And Christians believe that Jesus really was dead and now he really is alive. And to show and to demonstrate that belief, they get baptized. The church is founded by Jesus because it's not about what we do, but it's about what Jesus has done for us in his death and resurrection. And our response is simply to believe in him, to trust him and to be baptized. Now, sometimes we get hung up on what order these two things come in. Should someone believe first and then get baptized or should that it be the other way around? But that isn't all that important. What matters is, has it happened? Has it happened? Do I believe in Jesus and have I been baptized? When we respond to what Jesus has done for us by believing and being baptized, then we are part of, of the church founded by Jesus. But the question is, what now? Are we waiting in the equivalent of Birmingham New Street? Do we sort of just sit around, gra grab a coffee and scroll on our phones a bit until Jesus, the sort of heavenly train driver, comes to take us with him to the world we all want? Well, as you might guess, no, not really. Churches spring up when people believe in Jesus and are baptized. And they are the place where Jesus forms us. The place where we grow into the people ready for the world we all want, the world Jesus has won for us. But how do we get ourselves match fit for that world? This passage gives us at least four things that will always be priorities for growing churches. If they are important, they show us that a church is connected to Jesus and they are the things Jesus will use to deepen that connection as well. And I'll just run through them briefly. Firstly, a church that is a growing church listens carefully to the Bible. The passage tells us that the first Christians spent time learning from the apostles. 
verse 42. And they did that by talking to them face to face. Now, of course, we can't talk to the apostles face to face, but the teaching of the apostles is recorded for us in the Bible. And by listening carefully to the New Testament, we can hear their teaching too. That's why being a church that listens to the Bible is so important for us. It ha it's how God reminds us of all that he has done for us in Jesus. And that's why we need to be committed to listening to the Bible together on a Sunday and in our own time during the week. Secondly, a growing church will be a generous church. The church shared what they had with one another. We read about this in verses 44 and 45. They made sure that there wasn't anyone who was in need amongst them. And this happened as those who had more willingly gave up what they had to prove what they had to provide for those who had less. Interestingly, no one forced them to do it. They just did it. And they even sold things that might have generated an income, things like property, to provide for immediate needs. It was sacrificial and it in some senses didn't really make sense. A church being formed by Jesus will be generous with what they have, whether it is lots or a little. And that generosity will show up on our receipts, on our bank statements and on, a ch on our church accounts. Thirdly, this was a church that kept the focus on worship. They were so thankful for what Jesus had done for them that they worshipped him daily, we read in verse 46. It wasn't just a box that got ticked on a Sunday, right? I've done that. Now I can go and have my Sunday lunch. This was something they did publicly in the temple, which was the main gathering point in Jerusalem and in their homes as well. Every day. Worship for them was an everyday reality because they were so thankful for all that God had done for them in the death and resurrection of Jesus. And finally, this was a growing church. There was something deeply attractive about them. As they listened to the apostles, as they shared what they had, and as they worshipped God every day. They also talked about what they were doing and talked about what God had done. It wasn't a secret. And as a result, they just kept growing. Teaching, generosity, worship, and talking about their faith were markers that this church was staying connected to Jesus. And it was also the way that Jesus kept growing them, kept growing them deeper in their faith and kept growing them in number as well. A few, a few years ago, when I was going through New Street Station, they were doing this work to strip off all the concrete. As I said, it used to be this horrible concrete bunker, um, but um, they did all this work to make it a lot nicer. And it's now actually quite a pleasant place to, to be for a station anyway. Um, but at the time it was pretty grim. There were wires hanging down and areas cordoned off everywhere. The whole place um, was a building site really. And you sometimes felt like you took your life in your own hands going through it. You know, sometimes the church can feel like a little bit like that, too. Sometimes the church can feel a little bit like a mess. You know, I understand why people are skeptical about church. I, I really do. Over the years, I've been involved in a number of different churches and in, in different places. And sadly, I've seen some pretty bad behavior from both clergy and congregations. I get that churches can be hard places to be sometimes. Yeah, I'm deeply committed to the church because I know that the church is a work in progress. It isn't finished yet. It was founded by Jesus. It is being formed by Jesus and it is Jesus that will finish the church. 
And as we've seen constantly over the past few weeks, as we've looked at this big overview of the Bible, we can't build the kingdom. We never could and we never will. Because humans always mess it up. And when we trust ourselves rather than God, we get into terrible trouble. The custard always hits the fan. Only Jesus can finish his people. He's the one who brought the church into being in the first place through his death and resurrection. He's the one who grows us together. And he is the one who will one day finish the job. It won't ever be our hard work or our best efforts that finally free us from our failures. It was, is, and always will be Jesus. But Jesus has given ways to stay, given us ways to stay close to him and, and a means of, of uh, and a means to keep being formed by him. The challenge for us is, will we make these things a priority for us in our life together as a church? even when it's hard and even when it looks a bit different as it does at the moment. During Lent, we've got some great opportunities to keep growing together as a church. And I just want to encourage you, as Ben did before, to take a look at those things and maybe pick one or two things to be a part of. Ben and I are really excited about what we've got planned and we think it will really help St Saviours to keep growing as an everyday church during this season. So please do get involved. All the details are in the church email. Because this is how we keep growing as a church. But the church will only be finally finished when Jesus returns. We're still a work in progress. But one day, one glorious day, we will be finished. As we heard right at the start of this series, back in Revelation 22, one day, Jesus' servants will worship him. They will see his face and his name will be written on their foreheads. There shall be no more night and they will not need lamps or sunlight because the Lord God will be their light and they will rule as kings forever and ever. Then, and only then, will the church be finally finished. Shall we pray together? Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for all that you have done for us. We thank you for your death on the cross. We thank you for your glorious resurrection. We thank you that you founded the church. We thank you that you are growing us together. And we thank you that one day we will be finished. We will be the people that you have made us to be. Lord, help us to keep growing. Help us to stay connected to you and to continue to marvel at all that you have done. Amen. Thanks for that, Ben. Let's just take a moment and just pause and reflect on what God has been um, saying to us. Maybe there's something that we want to thank him for, something we want to say sorry for, or something we want to just ask his help with in response. And as we continue in prayer, we're going to move to um, Paul and Sally, and Paul's going to lead us in prayer. Morning. Um, we've got some prayers this morning based on the reading, and uh, what struck me about the reading was the phrase, they broke bread in their homes and ate together. And I think this is a very practical prayer because that's something that we, we haven't done with each other for a long time. So uh, I've got a little response. Um, I will say what we're looking forward to now much more than ever, 
when we can share the bread and wine and your responses and we can eat together. A very practical prayer and by the magic of technology it'll come upon the screen those words there okay and we can eat together. So I'll say it and we'll just practice it together now. What we are looking forward to now much more than ever when we can share the bread and wine In these times of isolation, confusion, loneliness and sadness, these times of worry, pain, sickness and bereavement, we we'll turn to you, Lord, as only we can, as only we must, and bring our lives before you once again, to ask for that daily strength, that daily hope, your daily love. What we are looking forward to now much more than ever when we can share the bread and wine and we can eat together. We miss the human touch of family, contact with loved ones, the handshakes, the hugs of friends, the pats on the back, the casual laughter, simple pleasures like cups of tea after the service, chit chat, biscuits, washing up, and even moving furniture. And what we are looking forward to now, much more than ever, when we can share the bread and wine and we can eat together. We think of our broken world, refugees risking life and limb, prisoners in their own lands, casualties of war, Victims of atrocities, homeless deaths on freezing streets, those crowded out because of race, gender, religion, politics or sexuality. And we pray for the inspiration of the apostles, your holy commitment to those in need, our commitment wholly to your commands, as we work towards a just and equitable society, based not on greed, but on faith and love for others and what we are looking forward to now much more than ever when we can share the bread and wine and we can eat together. We thank you for those who give up their time to help in food banks, not just in Retford but nationally. We thank you for their service in this time of adversity. We thank you for their actions in this time of austerity. We pray for the day when this is not necessity and may we remember them not only in our occasional prayers but every time we shop. To those who hunger give bread, to those who have bread give a hunger for justice and equality. And as our nation struggles with the economic uncertainty we pray for the powerless, the helpless, those who Jesus would have cared for most. We pray for those who have to make difficult spending decisions with increasingly tighter budgets. We pray for that time when poverty may be history and we pray that we may be part of that process. And what we are looking forward to now much more than ever when we can share the bread and wine and we can eat together. Because of lockdown, we cannot call on each other as we would like. But we can pray. Pray for those most in need in our community. The elderly, the sick, the bereaved, the housebound. Those in care homes and hospitals. And we thank you for the devotion and compassion of carers and medical staff. Help us to support those who mourn with prayers, words of comfort and practical help. We bring those people before you who we know in our hearts, who need your loving touch and to feel your presence in their lives. We bring each and every one before you now in these few moments of silence, by name, out loud, or in our hearts.
we bring them before you. And we look forward to seeing them all once again. What we are looking forward to now much more than ever when we can share your bread and wine and we can eat together. And we thank you for our church, our leaders, the families, and we pray for them now. We thank you for each other and pray for each other right now. We thank you that technology can break down barriers and bring us together, that we can see and hear each other and at least have some sort of contact. It may not be perfect, but we pray that it is enough for now. And with you, Lord, we look forward. We look forward to better times. What we are looking forward to now much more than ever, when we can share your bread and wine and we can eat together. Amen. Thank you so much, Paul. Let's draw those prayers together with the church's prayer for today, which will appear on the screen in just a moment. So we pray together. Holy God, you know the disorder of our sinful lives. Set straight our crooked hearts and bend our wills to love your goodness and your glory. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And as Jesus taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our final song this morning gives an opportunity for us to be still and reflect Reflect on what God has been saying to us. Reflect on God's presence with us by his spirit. And in that time to pray and ask God to change and transform us. To form us more and more into the likeness of his son, the Lord Jesus. It's be still for the presence of the Lord. Oh, 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 oh,
do remember this coming Wednesday is Ash Wednesday. We've got the phone only service at 10.30 and then the kind of more normal Zoom service at 7.30. Do join us for that if you can and look out for the craft and conversation which starts uh, this coming Thursday at 10.30. Speak to Judith Dawson for more info um, on that. But let's close with a, a final prayer together. So may the Lord bless us and watch over us. The Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord look kindly on us and give us his peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst us and remain with us this day and always. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Well, thanks so much for joining us, folks. It's been great to see you. Do stick around if you can for all the breakout rooms.